Today's show, a ton of news going on around the conference as Arkansas offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles reportedly staying put. Could Auburn defensive coordinator Derek Mason be on the move? Also, Stetson Bennett coming back to Georgia. Jermaine Burton, his wide receiver, he's on the move. Plus, some updates from Florida, Auburn, and others. And former Arkansas defensive back Joe Fouché will join the show to talk about his decision to transfer to LSU. And what can we expect from him playing back in his home state? Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. Great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And we start over at Arkansas as Kendall Bryles has reached a new deal to remain as Arkansas's offensive coordinator after being pursued for the same job at Miami, according to sources over at ESPN. It's a big get for Arkansas to keep Bryles, who's been with Coach Sam Pittman for the past couple of seasons. The Hawks led the SEC in rushing a year ago, and they won nine games that year. Browse will get another season with quarterback K.J. Jefferson, who is in his, uh, was just in his first year as full-time starter with the Hogs. Jefferson finished sixth in the SEC in total offense and was 10th nationally in passer rating with 21 touchdown passes and just four interceptions. He's 6'3", 244 uh, five pounds. Jefferson also rushed for six touchdowns, so... Uh, we'll see if Kendall Bryles sticking around can help build K.J. Jefferson into a more consistent player next year, and Arkansas could really do some damage in the SEC West. Now, speaking of the SEC West, over at Auburn, Derek Mason coming off a pretty successful season as defensive coordinator under Brian Harson at Auburn, and Auburn ranked fourth in the SEC in fewest yards per play allowed. According to a report from The Athletic, Bruce Feldman says that Mason has been trying drawing significant interest from Oklahoma State for its open defensive coordinator position. Okie State just lost standout D.C. Jim Knowles, who left for the same position at Ryan Day, uh, or Ryan Day staff at Ohio State. But will Derek Mason leave Auburn? That is the question. We will continue to track it and see, but certainly think Auburn should be pony up a little extra cash, try to keep Derek Mason in uh, Auburn because he was really good last year and, of course, former head coach in the SEC at Vanderbilt. Good mind to have in your room. Offense was the problem for Auburn last year, not so much the defense. Meanwhile, after a historic season that culminated in their first national championship in over 40 years, Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett the fourth has made his announcement that he is officially coming back to the Georgia Bulldogs for another season. It's good news for Bulldogs, as Bennett uh, made the announcement on his Instagram story on Wednesday, and JT Daniels has already reportedly entered the transfer portal. But the Bulldogs quarterback room going to be a crowded one for next year when you consider you've got five-star recruit Brock Vandergriff, former four-star recruit Carson Beck, and the highly touted incoming recruit Gunner Stockton. Some Georgia fans wondering, look, we love Stetson. We love him for what he did. We love him for winning the national championship. However, Georgia may be best served making this an open competition in the spring, and if Stetson gets beat out, so be it. There are other fans who say no. Stetson was the guy. He's earned it. He deserves to be the starter. Another season at Georgia, no questions asked. you got to think, though, Georgia does stick with Stetson as the starter in 2023. One of those guys, whether it be Beck, Vandergriff, maybe even Stockton, end up considering throwing their name into the transfer portal, but we will see. Speaking of the Georgia Bulldogs, Jermaine Burton, he made his announcement on Wednesday that he is entering the transfer portal, a little bit of a blow to the Georgia receiving core. After a season in which he was second on the team in receiving yards, Burton uh, figured to be a that he was going to be a bigger part of the offense moving forward. 
but already reports out there that he is in high demand. 24-7 Sports reporting that Alabama could be a potential landing spot for Jermaine Burton. Meanwhile, his former wide receivers coach, Cortez Hankton, now at LSU. The Tigers could be an option. And James Cooley, who is Georgia's co-OC for two seasons, he's now on the AM staff. So all potential landing spots and all SEC foes for Georgia. We'll see where Jermaine Burton ends up. Over at Arkansas, their leading rusher in 2020 and second leading rusher this past year, Trelon Smith, he has entered the transfer portal. He has uh, started his career at Arizona State, sat out the 2019 season, and tallied over 700 rushing yards and five touchdowns in 2020. He became the Razorbacks' number one running back, and that's how he started this year. But with the emergence of Rocket Sanders, Dominic Johnson, A.J. Green, his role became a little bit diminished, so Trelon Smith heading into the portal. Over at Alabama, linebacker Jalen Moody was projected to transfer to Texas, but a report from Bama Online suggests that the former Alabama linebacker will return to the Crimson Tide. Moody recorded an interception in the season opener against Miami this past season. He finished the year with 11 total tackles and a pick, but played mostly on special teams by the end of the year. In his four years at Bama, he's totaled 44 tackles. So Jalen Moody... Sounded like he's going to be back with the Tide. Over at Auburn, Lee Hunter, who's a freshman D lineman this past year for the Tigers, has announced he, uh, well, we knew he was in the transfer portal, but he's announced his transfer destination. He is going to reunite with Gus Malzahn at UCF. Hunter is six foot five, 300 pounds from Mobile. Did not record any stats this past season for Auburn. Was rated the number 21 D lineman in the class of 2021. D-tackle was Auburn's second-highest prospect to enroll last year. Hunter is already enrolled at UCF and will participate in spring football, according to the Orlando Sentinel. He had long been committed to Auburn, verbally pledging to Gus Malzahn back in December 2019. So Gus Malzahn sneakily bringing over a lot of guys, not just from Auburn, but from across the SEC, over to UCF. You can't uh, win the SEC? Go over to the a- the American and... Bring some SEC players with you is what Gus is doing over there. Meanwhile, also on Thursday, Auburn freshman D-lineman Ian Matthews, who was a former three-star recruit, he took to Twitter to reveal that he is entering the transfer portal. He did not record any stats as a freshman last year. Tyrone Hooper, or Hopper, rather, a Florida's linebacker who made 62 tackles during the season, he reportedly entered the transfer portal on Thursday afternoon But by Thursday evening, news came out the linebacker had reversed course. So Tyron Hopper coming back to Florida after entering the portal for just a couple of hours. He made 10 tackles for a loss this season, three and a half sacks. News comes as uh, On3 Sports noted he's a former four-star recruit, was a a big step up this year, appearing in 11 games uh, for the Gators in 2020, finished with 15 Total tackles, hoppers, return will help a relatively thin linebacking core for the Gators, who will also have Ventrell Miller coming back next season. Tennessee, man, we talked about Isaiah Nayer, a big-time receiver coming over from Wyoming and entered the transfer portal and committed to come to the Vols. We even talked about it on Thursday's show with Eric Kane, if you missed that. Well, now the Wyoming receiver has changed course, and he's going to the other UT the Texas Longhorns on Thursday took to Twitter to reveal he's not going to Rocky Top. Instead, he signed with the Texas Longhorns. So Hendon Hooker will have to find another big play threat with Isaiah Nair no longer going to Tennessee. He's going to team up with Steve Sarkeesian and Texas. Mississippi State, we know they recently lost wide receiver Malik Heath to the transfer portal. On Thursday, receiving court took another hit as a freshman wide receiver entered the portal. According to 24-7 Sports, Theodore Knox entered the portal. He appeared in three games for Mississippi State last year, mostly on special teams. He did return one kickoff for 31 yards. He was a four-star recruit in 2021. Texas A&M, they lost a running back to the transfer portal. Redshirt freshman Darvin Hubbard, currently in the portal, he signed in the class of 2020. He redshirted in 2020, making a brief appearance in the South Carolina game that year. This year, he appeared in a couple of games. Arkansas, they've been busy in the transfer portal as well as linebacker Andrew Parker took to Twitter to reveal his plan to explore his transfer options. He played in two games this year for the Razorbacks. 
In the coaching news across the SEC, Christian Robinson had been a hot name on the market since Dan Mullen was fired at Florida. The former Gator linebacker also served as the defensive coordinator after Todd Grantham was fired. But now the ex-Georgia linebacker is heading to the SEC West, according to On3 Sports. He will join Brian Harson's staff. No word yet on what position he will hold. But that could be one to watch if Derek Mason ends up leaving. Maybe Christian Robinson considered as the next D.C. at Auburn. Missouri, they continue to shake up their staff, and they're adding a former assistant from LSU. They are going to hire Blake Baker as their new safeties coach. Baker served as LSU line, LSU's linebackers coach this past season, but he's a former D.C. at Miami and Louisiana Tech. He played linebacker at Tulane in the early 2000s, so he will coach safeties at Missouri. Meanwhile, Coleman Hutzler, been a member of the Ole Miss staff since January, came on board as a special teams coordinator following a one-year stint as co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach, but now it sounds like his next stop will be at Alabama. According to On3 Sports, Coleman Hutzler headed to Alabama. Prior to his time at Texas, Hutzler spent four seasons at South Carolina. After a season away from the SEC, Travaris Robinson is coming back. He spent last year with Miami as their DB's coach. According to Bruce Feldman, Robinson is headed back to the SEC in a yet-to-be-hired or set-to-be-hired as a yet-to-be-announced position at Alabama. And a quick baseball note, some bad news for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They just came out as uh, the number two team in the country in D1 baseball's preseason top 25. On Thursday, the Hogs reportedly got some bad news. Kendall Rogers of D1 baseball reporting their projected Friday night starting pitcher, Peyton Paulette, has a UCL injury that will require Tommy John surgery. He will miss the entire 2022 season. Last year, he appeared in 15 games, made 11 starts was a solid contributor to the pitching staff and, again, was supposed to be the ace of this Arkansas Razorback staff, so they lose him for the year. Big blow for the number two team in the country. And there you have it. That is around the conference. Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. When we return, we'll talk with Joe Fouché, former Arkansas DB, now LSU defensive back. All right, guys, this is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is that how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. If you want to see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. If you run your own business, NetSuite.com or NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. They give you visibility and control of your financials, your inventory, your HR planning, budgeting, and more. There is everything you need to grow your business all in one place. You can automate your processes, close your books in no time while staying well ahead of the competition. Over 28,000 businesses are already using NetSuite, N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program. For those ready to upgrade, just go to netsuite.com slash locked. netsuite.com slash locked. You will get that special one-of-a-kind financing offer On the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash locked. We're all along here, locked on SEC. And look, we've had a lot of movement here in the transfer portal in recent weeks, particularly around the Southeastern Conference. And one guy who played for an SEC school, and now jump into another SEC school is our buddy Joe Fouché, former Arkansas Razorback, now LSU Tiger. Joe, welcome in. Is that weird to hear still when I say you're an LSU Tiger? Yeah, it, it kind of is weird to hear. You know, I'm, I'm still getting used to it, even though it's where I grew up at, man. I'm still getting used to it. So you, you mentioned it right there. You're a New Orleans native. You played high school ball there. Uh, I guess let our listeners know what made you at this point in your career want to head back and, and play for the hometown LSU Tigers. You know, um, I wanted to be closer to my family, you know, and then and then I thought when they made the coaching change, um, it was it was a few coaches that recruited me, so I felt like it was the best move. You uh, you had an outstanding career at Arkansas, the fourth leading tackler on the team this last year, a, a team captain. Uh, you know, the Razorbacks certainly got better every year you were there, particularly with Coach Sam Pittman coming in there. But 
I guess what would you say to Arkansas fans who maybe are are wondering why, you know, at this point in your career you decide would decide to leave? I think most most Arkansas fans understand and, and I think some of them don't, you know. Um, um from what I've been reading on Twitter, you know, I, I, I try not to let that get to me. But um, you know, I, I saw this opportunity to come home, you know, play in front of my family, the ones who haven't got a chance to see me play yet, because it's a lot of my family members that, that really can't afford to get to Arkansas. You know, with, with it being about nine, ten hours away from home. So, like, when I made the move, man, my, my family, like, the close friends were, 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 like, the happiest that I did it. You know, most of them were so happy because some of them never really came to an LSU game before. And so just just giving them that opportunity, you know, to, to come watch me play in person. I think that's what's cool for a lot of the, the guys that are going in the transfer portal right now and going back to LSU are guys that are from Louisiana getting to kind of almost have a homecoming and get to go back and play in front of your close family and friends. Uh, the new head coach, Brian Kelly, I know one of the first hires he made was bringing back Frank Wilson to LSU, a longtime assistant coach. He recruited some uh-huh. big names out of the New Orleans area. How much did uh, did Coach Frank factor into your decision? You know, a lot. Um, I, I, I love Coach Frank. You know, we, we've been had a relationship. Um, since, since then, you know, since he was at here at LSU and, and I was playing at McDonald's 35. So just when he when he got here, you know, I kind of, it, it was like a no-brainer for me. And then, you know, like like I said, I wanted to play in front of my family. So just the relationship that we already had built up, you know, it, it was, it was I mean, it was, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, Frank Wilson's one of those guys that once you talk to, man, you can't help but love the guy. And for him to leave a head coaching job, he was a head coach at McNeese State, to leave a head coaching job to come back to LSU to be an assistant for Brian Kelly he speaks to uh, you know, how much he loves the state of Louisiana and how much he loves the LSU yeah, to right. take that that opportunity. Uh, initial impressions of Coach Brian Kelly, what do you think? Obviously a guy very successful for years at Notre Dame, but coming to the SEC, what, what do you think of Coach Kelly so far? Um, I mean, I, I've, I've had the chance to talk to him more than once. Um, he's, he's strictly about business, you know. He's, he's I mean, he's a, he's a, a great guy, to, a great coach, a great head coach to get around. Um, you know, when he, when he come in, he talk, he have that demeanor, you know, that he wants to win. You know, he, he gets his, he delivers his message and he makes sure he gets it to you clearly. Um, and I feel like, I feel like the steps that we're taking, you know, it's, it's the right steps to, to build this program and, and put it back to where it was at. The thing that's so unique about this move, Joe, is that you're not coming to Baton Rouge alone. You're bringing one of your defensive back teammates and Greg Brooks with yeah. you, another New Orleans guy. Uh, how much did you guys talk to each other? Did you think about, hey, we're, let's make this move together? Was it, hey, oh, you're going too? How did that all work out? Did, did y'all both talk to each uh, other throughout this? Yeah, we kind of did, you know, but it was it was like, it was it was sort of like, you know, if, if, it's, you know, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. You know, we didn't force it, you know. Um, we didn't force it on each other, and I feel like like it was meant to be, so it, it wound up happening for the both of us. I guess you'll you'll talk to the coaching staff on on what role or positions you guys will play, but I guess it, in a perfect world, is it you playing more of that free safety position and him in the slot, or how do you kind of see, envision you guys playing this at LSU? Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm playing that free safety role, and, and, and Greg actually can play corner as well. But um, I know he's 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 a nickel too, so he's he's listed as a nickel. Um, but he can he can kind of go back and forth from nickel to uh, corner. Some interesting announcements the last few days, Joe, with some of the guys at LSU announcing that they're coming back for another year, particularly Ali yeah. Gay and Micah Baskerville uh, and Jay Ward. I mean, those are three big names on that defense that you guys are yeah. getting back with the addition of some young guys like B.J. Ojolari and uh, Mason Smith and a lot of really young guys. Uh, you feel like people might be just kind of looking at this defense on paper, might be sleeping on you guys. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Yes, like you said, I feel like they are sleeping. Um, but but with those guys coming back, you know, I, I feel like it speaks volumes, and and I feel like they they they, they you know they have faith in what, what's going to happen. Like you know, um, coming back and what they can bring to the table, what they already bring to the table. You know, just mixing those pieces together. You know, I feel like it, I mean. It's a, it's the best decision for them, and it's the best decision for the team, you know, and moving the team forward. And when I, I mean, when I saw that, man, my eyes lit up like a candle. Um, <laughs> I was showing Greg, like you know, all the guys that was coming back. We, we were all talking about it. Um, I mean, and I, I can imagine how the how the fans and how the coaches are feeling about those guys coming back because I mean, like I said, it's, it's mixing the right pieces together. 
More with Joe Fouché in just a second, but need to remind you guys about our friends at Bet Online. They would like to wish you a happy new betting year. Tons of NFL playoff games this weekend. Big slate of SEC basketball games, and you can get in on the action. All of it at Bet Online is to remain your number one spot for all the best sports wagering action throughout 2022. It's a new year. I got a new updated desktop and mobile website. You could sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N. That will get you started from football, the playoffs, to basketball, hockey, whatever it is you want to get in on. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for you throughout this season, this year. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. You like the Bucks, you like the Packers, you like the Rams, whoever it is, get in on the action. Bet online, it is where the game starts. Continue our conversation with Joe Fouché, former Arkansas Razorback, now an LSU Tiger coming back home to play for the home state school in Louisiana. Uh, Joe, four seasons at Arkansas, over 230 tackles, five interceptions. Talk a little bit about how you improved under in, in that Barry Odom defense, because I know Barry Odom, well-respected, one of the best defensive coordinators yeah. in the country. But uh, just talk about your improvement, your growth the last couple of years in that defense. Yeah, so – um. Yeah, cause cause Odom, he was very hard on me, you know. Um, you know that's why I, I feel like I've developed, you know, into into the player I am now. Um, I mean then, I mean the defense that we were running, you know, the three two six, you know, we had we had an extra DB on the field, you know, that that allowed us to to do things, um, show different coverages and stuff like that. Um, but my role my role in defense was, I, I mean, a little bit different. Um, you know, I felt like it was it was best for the team. You know, and I, and I and I did that to the best of my ability, and, and it worked out a lot. Um, but because older man, he's a he's a genius. You know, in a defense we run on, um, most teams start to starting to do it now with the three two six. Um, but 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 when it came when it came to Odom, he he I mean he he called the right plays. You know, he put us in the right position, and I feel like that 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 developed me. You know, over the last two years with him. It's gonna be weird when you and Greg put on that purple and gold and line up against against Arkansas next year, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a lot different, you know. Of course, of course, Um, like, you know, with, with that transition, a lot of other things went on, you know. A lot of players left here, went there. So I feel like that game is going to be, it's going to be more than, more than just a game when we play them come, come, you know, come that time. I guess the good thing is, you know, all the KJ Jefferson's uh, tendencies and stuff now. I mean, you could, <laughs> maybe you got a leg up on him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel like that. You know, I, I mean, of course he's going to get better as 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 on um, time going, but I feel like you know I'm I'm real comfortable in the things he do very well and some of his weaknesses as well. What about some of the guys? I mean, you know, not just you and Greg, but LSU really racked up in the transfer portal with guys coming in. And, you know, I saw Kyron Lacey, one of the best receivers at Louisiana Lafayette. He's coming in on top of all the veterans that LSU is bringing back, like Jare Jenkins and Kayshawn Boutte. I mean, you got to be excited to go up against those guys in practice because it feels like, what, they're only going to make you guys better. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I definitely feel like that. Um. I mean, just you know, hanging around those guys, you know, I, I can tell that you know that they're that they're you know that they're very serious about you know this upcoming season, and um, just you know, just being around the locker room, you know, I'm I'm really just observing, you know, getting to know guys really really well, and I feel like you know by the time spring games come and stuff like that, you know, it's, we're gonna be able to hit it off really really well, like as far as like you know getting to know those guys and you know bringing my leadership to the table. And I mean, and, you know, ha having some guys help me out in that case. It's a couple more for you, Joe. What have you heard so far about your new defensive coordinator, Matt House? Uh, he's still coaching in the NFL playoffs with the Kansas City Chiefs. But what have you heard about him and, and what makes you excited to play for him coming in as your new D.C.? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to play with him. Um, I know he's an aggressive play caller. You know, that's that's the type of defense I love, you know, a, a aggressive defense. And, um... You know, just man, I can't wait to work with him because it's always a, a it's a blessing, especially when you get someone you know from from that organization that's that's been doing what they've been doing. Um, and I just can't wait to work with him, and I can't I mean I I can't say it I can't say it enough, man. It's it's a, it's a blessing to to have someone like that you know on the organization, um, because you get to learn. I mean, it's it's basically like you 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 getting ready for the you know we already getting ready for the NFL, but to have a guy that that's actually you know that I'm watching play right now. You know, and he's coming here. It's probably 
one of the biggest blessings because I'm, I'm you getting ready to to get the the best knowledge there is. So obviously, you guys will kind of start up uh, spring ball here very soon, and you know have the spring game in a couple weeks and all that kind of stuff. But what's your what's your schedule like? I mean, obviously, getting back into class and getting situated on campus and all that kind of stuff. How much how much left of uh, classwork do you have left? Yeah, so um, that's what I've been doing. I, I actually uh, had class today. I have class. I started yesterday, so I, I, it's been kind of like I've been all over the place, you know. Um, I haven't started working out yet with the with the. I mean, I just I'm getting clear. It should be tomorrow, but I'm, I've kind of been all over the place. But I've been settling in as the days as the week go on. Um, actually, all the way settled in. Hopefully tomorrow and be able to start working out with the team. It's crazy because I mean, it's like you don't think of this like this late in your college career, but having a new learn a new campus, find out where this hall is yeah. and where this classroom is. <laughs> it's it's relearning exactly. everything. Yeah, I was using my GPS today. I was I was so lost on campus. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I only had I only had one class. Um, and it wasn't too far from like the academic center, and most of them has has been online too. So that's a, that's a good thing. Last thing for you, Joe. We're just uh, what a couple weeks removed from the national championship game. Georgia beat Alabama. Did you watch the game? And two, who did you root for? Did you root for either side? Man, that's that's a, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I kind of no, nah, I kind of stay, I kind of stay out of that. Uh, I just sit back and watch the game, you know, with 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 us being, you know, playing Georgia and Bama. I mean, because it could have went, it could have went either way. I mean, I, I mean, I kind of, to be honest, I really from from playing either, both teams, I felt like Georgia was going to win this one. You know, uh, I know they lost the first one, but I, I just felt like Georgia was going to win this one because, I mean, just from playing those two teams. You know, we came up we last time with Arkansas. We we lost some. We badly lost some. And um, when we played Georgia, it was a different ball game. So I, I kind of I ain't gonna say I was rooting for Georgia, but I, I just knew they was gonna win. Yeah, I, I see. My opinion is almost like you got to root for Stetson Bennett, right? Like that that guy winning a title. Like, come on. Right, right, and then it's, it's I mean, it's, and then him for him to to come here too is it, crazy. Yeah, it's it's insane how how he was able to to get it done. But uh, three straight years now, Joe, three straight years, the SEC national champions, LSU, Alabama, now Georgia, might be LSU's turn again this year. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, best of luck to you, man. Really looking forward to seeing what you do out there in uh, for LSU this year. And uh, let's keep in touch. All right. I got to appreciate it. Appreciate time. All right, there you go. That's Joe Fouché, former Arkansas running back or Arkansas Razorback, now LSU Tiger. Going to be starting in the secondary for Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers come this fall. It's uh, it's crazy, man. A lot of movement across the conference, but uh, very cool to see some familiar names moving from this SEC school to another SEC school. You're going to have to update your depth charts constantly this offseason with the transfer portal. That is going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. My thanks so much to Joe Fouché. We will talk to you guys on Monday right here on Locked on SEC. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out the Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys on Monday.